Aiden's eyes darted back and forth between the two sisters. Identify twin sisters. Distinction ability, plus one. Triggering the basic identification ability and analyzing the differences between the two targets. It was like Aiden was playing a game of spot the difference. What the system was trying to delineate was the subtle differences between the two women's faces. For example, the girl on the left had a small dimple in the corner of the eye, while the person on the right did not. The person on the left had dimples on the left side of her mouth, while the person on the right side had dimples on the opposite side. Combined with his ability to pull up memory at will, how could Aiden not distinguish the two women? He closed his discrimination ability and sighed at the girl on the right. Why are you here? Did you think your sister couldn't handle it yourself? The girl looked dissatisfied, pursing her lips. Ugh, boring. You recognized us so quickly. This figure, of course, was Lena, and next to her was Brenda. In response to Aiden's words, Lena then responded, And how could you greet me like that? Aren't you going to welcome me? Ahem, <laughs> I wouldn't dare. Aiden laughed. I'm sorry, I'm not sure you needed to come. After Lena and Aiden got acquainted with each other, their old feud was eliminated, and they even played jokes on one another occasionally. Oh, poor you. Lena lightly spat at Aiden and leaned back. Ah, whatever, I'm just doing my job. She took a clean fork, picked up the small side dishes, and began cramming them into her mouth. I've been driving for hours. I am starving to death. After eating, Lena wiped her mouth delicately and continued. By the way, is that girl that lives in 802 your girlfriend? When I asked her where you were, she told me you had returned to the Bayside District without telling anyone. I stopped by to say hello and I found out that you're not even in town. Don't get me wrong, I'm not after you though. Looking at Lena's slightly red face, Aiden silently nodded. The girl she was referring to was Olivia. When Aiden had moved into Hidden Gardens, Beatty gave the remaining three rooms on the 8th floor to Aiden and his friends. Aiden lived in 803. 802 next door was picked by Olivia, and 801 next door to her house, Doblar and Miller. This time coming back, Aiden didn't bring any of them along, but he had told them where he was going and when. Selena had found out where he had gone from Olivia. Honestly, Aiden was not surprised at all. Lena? Brenda pouted and glared at her sister angrily. Then, a sly smile crept across her face. So, not only did neither of you tell me that Aiden was coming back to Bayside, but you're also not going to tell me that he's going around and getting girlfriends all over the place? Be honest, do you two have a thing going on in Arkland City? Shut up! Lena blushed. She swatted at Brenda's mouth with her fork. Brenda chewed on some mac and cheese and snickered, but in her eyes, she was quietly passing through a touch of inexplicable irritability. Lena didn't notice her sister's strange expression and finally put the topic on the right track. She glanced at the startled Junior hiding in the corner, as well as those thugs lying on the ground. She assessed the scene with the professional's eye, then turned back to Aiden. These are the guys you told Brenda about? Aiden nodded. So Lena looked into Junior's eyes and became very serious. Junior looked at Lena and Brenda. He was shocked and said, Wait, Officer Larson? How are the two of you? Lena humphed coldly. Sir, that's the Bayside District Officer Larson over there. I'm the Arkland City Officer Larson. Junior was trying to understand Lena's words when he saw Lena take out a large number of handcuffs from her coat. Then she presented her badge to Junior, flashed her white teeth, and showed a smile that made Junior feel even more frightened. In the name of the Arkland City Police Department, you're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Lena and Brenda took turns reading Junior and his whole gang their rights, handcuffing them and leading them to their car. Aiden watched Lena work with awe. She was so fierce that she actually carried handcuffs with her at all times. He made a note not to cross him. Junior looked at the shackles on his hands and almost fainted. It was easy to be lawless in the Bayside District, but if he removed to Arkland City, his eyes lost their light. I, 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 I'm sorry. Please let me go, ma'am. The gangsters cried for mercy, but Lena was completely stone-faced as she handcuffed them all together. Don't worry, you're all going to a Bayside District prison. Lena explained with a grin. Then she turned her head and looked all of them in the eye, one by one. For a few days at least. Then you'll all get moved and you could feel what it's like in the prisons of Arkland City. It had been quite a day for Junior. After Aiden threatened him, he had first experienced the wrath of Zack's chair leg combat, and then the terror of having to look at Aiden at his most intimidating, and now he had fallen helplessly into Lena's hands. As his mind finally reached its limit, 
he rolled his eyes backward into his head and fainted. About half an hour later, more Bayside District officers were sent to the scene for backup, and all the gangsters were taken away. They had just released the same crew a few days ago, but they hadn't expected them to revisit their old crimes so quickly. This time, it was Arkland City's much tighter prison compound that was waiting for them. This time, no one could save them. Don't worry about it. The law will take care of them, Lena reassured Cherry and her father. We'll prosecute them to the fullest extent, she promised. Brenda smiled at the father and daughter, who had not yet returned to their senses, and handed them a business card. If this happens again, call me. After the gangsters were carted away, Cherry and her father's faces began to look better. The dark clouds which had been piling above their heads finally dissipated completely. They took Brenda's card tremblingly, almost in tears. They finally knew what Aiden meant when he said they hadn't called the right police officer. Brenda and Lena were the right officers. The father and daughter wiped their excited tears, grateful for Aiden's help. They were not idiots. Of course, they could see that Aiden was the one who orchestrated everything that had gone on to save them. If there was no Aiden, the gang would still be wandering lawlessly around the street. If not for Aiden, they would still be living in fear. Zack, your friend here is really neat, Cherry said shyly. Uh, of course, you were also very good. Hearing Cherry's soft praise, Zack felt like half of his body was melting. He scratched his head and gave a proud smile. In Zack's mind, Aiden was closer to him than his own brother. The stronger Aiden's abilities were, the more proud of him he was.